So let's continue the topic of uh, dielectric discharge test. The rate of discharge depends only on the discharge resistors and the amount of stored uh, charge from insulation. However, the capacitive charge is discharged rapidly until the voltage across the insulation has reduced to almost zero. At that time, the effect of leakage current will be negligible, so only the reversal of dielectric absorption is left. This is known as dielectric reabsorption and minor uh, mirror image of dielectric absorption. So the concept is when you are doing uh, 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 doing the insulation testing by normal method, you are basically measuring the charging current, absorption current at the same time, and the reading is not that much uh, stable. But uh, when you are doing the discharge test, after some time the charging current will decay. There is no resistive uh, or conductive charging current so the at, the at the end what remains that you are monitoring is the polarization of the uh, of the specific insulation so the, uh, you want to check the chemical properties of the insulator you it would also depend upon moisture and other things and you can uh, by getting this value you can do the analysis <coughs> The capacitive current quickly decays from high value with a relatively short time constant a few seconds. The absorption or reabsorption during discharge current always start at higher value but has much time, longer time, up to many minutes it caused by a dipole randomizing their alignment. Uh, uh, randomizing their alignment within the insulation and electron shell returning to an undistorted shape. This has the effect of current flowing if discharge circuit is still connected or voltage reappearing on the sample. It is if it is left open circuit rapidly removing the effect of leakage and capacitive current allows the possibility of interpreting the degree of polarization of insulation and relating it to moisture and other polarizing effects. <clears throat> the test item is first charged for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes at high voltage until full absorption has taken place. The mega insulation tester that automate this test charge the test sample for 30 minutes. At this time capacitance is fully charged and the direct absorption is essentially complete. Only leakage current continues to flow. At this point the test voltage is removed and the insulation discharge through the instrument interval internal discharge resistors quickly discharge the capacitive charge after 60 second discharge any remaining current flows is measured at this time the capacitive has capacitance has been discharged and the voltage has collapsed so that the charge stored in the dipole can be viewed independently of the masking current that are dominant during the charging process of a insulation test the measured results are then entered into following formula and index is calculated <coughs> the measurement is temperature dependent so it's important to test at a reference temperature or to record the temperature insulation in high voltage equipment often consists of layers each having its own capacitance and associated leakage resistance when insulation is built up in this way the aim is to make each layer such that the voltage stress is shared equally between layers. When the insulator is discharged, each layer charge will decrease equally until there is no voltage remaining. When a layer is a faulty between good layers, its leakage resistance will decrease while capacitance is likely to remain the same. A standard insulation test will be determined by the good layers and not likely to reveal this condition. But during dielectric discharge, the time constant of faulty layer will mismatch the others to yield a higher dielectric discharge value. A low DDD value indicates that reabsorption current is decaying quickly and the time constant of each layer is similar. A high value indicates that a reabsorption exhibits long relax relaxation times which may point to a problem. So insulation is made, uh, if the insulation is made up of layers, so if the uh, decaying is fast, then we can say all the layers are decaying quickly 
the reabsorption current is similar but if uh, one or two layers are defective then you will see a different pattern that will show you at the end and you can find out that uh, the equipment, this uh, insulation is uh, defective uh, specific layer might be defective but we are doing normal uh, insulation testing that we have discussed could not find out this uh, issue here is the reabsorption current you can see this is the absorption current you can see this is the absorption current this is the total current and this is basically the capacitive uh, current so you can see after some time capacitive current is decreased but you can see the absorption current is still there and it will take much longer time to decay so you can consider different layers as uh, different capacitors connected uh, together uh, <coughs> Uh, in uh, you can say and then uh, if all capacitors are uh, healthier you will get uh, all the discharge uh, fast discharge and decaying but if uh, one of the capacitor is not healthy a layer is not healthy then discharge will be slower and uh, it means that one of the layer uh, of the insulation is not healthy so a dielectric discharge test typically conditions from practical research primarily carried out and generated by EDF arrive at figure of merit in the following table. This technique was developed for high voltage generators but has applicable on any multi-layer insulation. So dielectric discharge value in milliamperes. Uh, you can see if the value is greater than 7, that insulation is bad. So if the value is between 4 to 7, the insulation is poor and between 2 and 4 insulation is questionable and less than 2 it's okay <clears throat> so here we will discuss something about polarization index uh, so we have discussed so far the relative discharge how it's working and what are the uh, criteria by which we by which we can decide insulation is healthy or not healthy thank you very much